It's no mistake that the internet has changed the way we live, from consuming entertainment, to buying new products, gaining knowledge, or anything a little more questionable. It's an extension of us. But the real question is, when it comes to love and relationships, is it bringing us closer together or pushing us further apart? This is the evolution of dating. In the days of cavemen, dating was more like finding someone strong and surviving together. If you were weak, you weren't desirable. Move on to the 1920s is all about settling down and getting married. Then you move on to the 1960s and 70s where marriage values change and it's more about just having fun. But the way you meet potential love interests has evolved over the years. Now you can meet someone without actually meeting them in person first through online dating. With advances in dating, it can be argued that one can just fast track their way into love. But let's see if that's really true or not. The amount of online dating users continues to grow each year. It is now becoming another way for individuals to meet and date. So much so to the point, in the last 20 years, thousands of websites have cropped up. A small example would be Match, Tinder, eHarmony, Plenty of Fish, Coffee Meets Bagel, Meet Me, Happen, East Meets East, Down, Grinder. oh, weird one, uh, Farmers Only, Women Behind Bars. Okay, uh, let's take it back for a second. Let's start off with Match, the first dating website. We actually had the opportunity to interview the creator of Match. So to start things off, what year did Match start and why? This was 1995 and in the 1996. A problem at the time that I understood that I wasn't finding Ms. Wright for me. So I kind of had an idea, well, maybe I could convince uh, women to put themselves in a database and I would just marry number one. The first incarnation was not on the web, it was done by email. Since its launch in 1995, Match has accumulated over 42 million users worldwide. And since then, the technology has advanced quite a bit as well. Dating websites actually operate on complex algorithms that are a little difficult to understand. But basically, it boils down to matching people up based on mutual likes and interests. After meeting with Gary and learning a bit more about the history and operations of online dating, we decided to go out and ask more individuals about their opinions and potential pros that come along with it. So, why did you decide to use online dating? Honestly, I was bored. So I, I only used it for about two to three weeks. I tried for fun and then I didn't like it, so I stopped. I chose online dating because I was having trouble finding someone in person and I figured with online dating it gives you more of a variety to choose from. I had a lot of free time and I was all like, you know what, I'd really like to go out on some dates right now. I want to meet some people, see if there's any mutual chemistry and maybe have someone for like the next uh, semester at school. It just seemed like a fun thing to try because I had seen friends like post about it on social media and like <laughs> maybe something would come of it but it didn't really matter to me whether anything actually happens. You know, online dating is a brilliant tool because now more than ever we have amazing opportunity to be able to connect with one another. One thing that people always said was, oh there's just nobody like in my neighborhood, there's no one in my town. Online dating starts happening, dating apps start coming about and it removes that excuse from people. You get friendships, you get cool friends out of it and so I think that's what these online dating sites are for, for people who are more outgoing and people who are like willing to meet strangers and build new friendships. You kind of create this custom person that relates to you, that interests you, right? I'm going to give this a try, not because I wanted hookups, because it was free and I just wanted to see what it was all about. It's immediate, you know, if you swipe, you see somebody you like, somebody else comes along, you swipe right, swipe right, swipe right, and you, before you know it, you get a whole library of all the people you swiped. I think it gives us a better chance at finding someone who has similar interests, someone that you can relate to. After finding out a little bit more about the pros, we decided to ask, so what are the cons of online dating? The good news, there's hardly any cons. There's no commitment. If it's not going well, you just move on. What is the first thing I receive? Guess what? It's a d pic. This guy who was about maybe like 70, he asked me to step on him as like a part of like his kink. <laughs> He's like, I'm really into kink. I was like, okay, nah, that's not the end of the world. And he gets into detail and uh, needless to say, so uncomfortable. You don't really know until what they're really like until you meet them. And then there's also that part of just like, it's really shallow. Like you like swipe like right or left because of someone's face, like how they look. What I meant by online shopping in terms of a mate, women and men will actually go online, 
because it's convenient, browse through their phone and they'll start picking the checklist off of appearance or whatever and they'll start shopping in a sense. Well, I felt like I would talk to people for ages. Like I would spend a lot of time talking to these people that I don't know only to like have nothing come out of it. I can't, I can't tell if that was like an efficient use of time. You're not going to look at the pictures and be able to decipher the entire puzzle. If there's less information, you, you won't be able to get a better feel for what kind of personality or type of person this is. I believe that if people strictly online date, it could cause problems. You're losing human interaction. I watched this episode of Shameless about Tinder. That was an advertisement for like hookups, which I thought it was kind of strange because here you are in a nightclub, you got all these people around, right? And you're on the phone trying to do hookups. It seemed like at the end of the day, people prefer to meet in person rather than online. Before we go, there's another question we'd like to ask. Do you have any advice for anyone who wants to try it out for the first time? And what are your final thoughts? Just state things really clearly in your bio. Guys, don't be thirsty. Don't treat women like they're just objects. Everything you do on online dating reflects to your results. Choose your apps wisely. Stay true. Don't fight for anything if they're not fighting equally because that's just not going to leave anyone happy. If you're hesitant, take comfort in that and don't do it. If you want to just interact with someone and just like kind of put yourself out there, it's healthy too. Don't think of online dating as just bad. I mean, there's a lot of good to it. And, you know, I had my bad experiences, but I also had some success from it. Every time I would uh, try to meet, like, a girl online, it was always about just meeting in person. There's that quote, right? Happiness isn't real unless it's shared. When I was younger, that was the only means of communicating with somebody outside of being with somebody is telephone. Yeah, I mean, as far as the dating, as far as the things that people do are, are pretty much the same. Now that all this has been laid out there, there's really only one more question to ask, and that's, what will you decide? She's real fine, my 409. She's real fine, my 409. She's real fine, my 409. My 409. In the 1950s and 60s, car culture exploded. It was a hands on generation of people modifying their cars themselves and experimenting with engines to get the fastest car in town. Young people loved racing each other in their fast muscle cars, but it was dangerous and illegal. Fremont, California became the destination for racing with its opening of a drag strip in 1959. The Fremont Drag Strip, or Baylands Raceway, as it was named in later years, was located off Christie Street in Fremont, near what is now the Pacific Common Shopping Center. For a few dollars, anyone could race, from their favorite hot rod to top fuel dragsters. The drag strip's quarter mile track was not only a favor for locals, but also attracted racers from across the country because of its unique attributes. It was one of the faster tracks in the nation, so drag race guys like Don Garlitz and people like that used to really like to come to Fremont because that's where they set their records. It was the perfect location. It was flat, it was close to the ocean, so it was ideal for testing high performance cars. One of the most remembered races at Fremont Drag Strip was between Don Garlitz and Shirley Muldowney. 
Don Garlett, or Big Daddy, as known by his fans, is considered the father of drag racing. Garlett's not only innovated engine technology, but was the first to break through many speed barriers, winning a total of 17 world championships. Shirley Muldowney, known as the First Lady of Drag Racing, was the first woman to receive a license from the National Hot Rod Association to drive a top fuel dragster. Shirley won a total of 18 NHRA national events in her pink 3,000 horsepower top fuel dragster and was the first woman inducted into the National Hot Rod Association Hall of Fame. Shirley and Big Daddy were very competitive, which led to some tension between them. Shirley and Garlitz had a heated match at Fremont. No, I've been reading, and an article came out today in the paper, and it was it was just all on Don Garlitz and saying that that you win like a lot of other drag racers, and you've got one of the biggest egos that, as a drag racer. Is that what it takes to win in drag racing? You must have an ego. What, what do you think about that comment? No, in fact, there there isn't any room for egos in my camp. We work together as a team, and um, it that's how we go to the winner's circle. So to say my ego is big, well, Don has always had a good sense of humor, hasn't he? <laughs> Shirley and Garlitz had a heated match at Fremont. Wow. Looks like Muldani's thunder tires right out of the start. She'll have to shut off. And on that day, Big Daddy got the best of Shirley. For a lot of us that came to the track in those days, it was, it was better than Disneyland. Because here we were in our own town and some of the, the biggest hot rod and, and drag racing stars in the country would come to Fremont. There wasn't a lot going on. We didn't have you know, cable networks. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have a lot going on. So when there was a drag race, it was promoted on the radio Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Fremont Raceway, the East versus West Funny Car Fuel Racer Wheel Standard Rocket Championship featuring a lineup of superstars that reads like the who's who of motorsports. This Sunday, the East versus West Funny Car Fuel Racer Wheel Standard Rocket Championship. Where else? Fremont Raceway. I wouldn't say there was a typical person that went there, but there's certain characteristics of the person that drew him there. The need for speed, you know, to coin a phrase, the need for speed. Uh, just the excitement, the anticipation of a really, really close race between two good, excellent, skillful, dri skillful drivers. Uh, sometimes the crowd was just as loud as the cars, so you can only imagine. <laughs> a certain smell about it too, the nitromethane that they, they burned and the other alcohol-based uh, fuels that they used, uh, the burning of the rubber, the smell of the rubber that burned, especially at the starting line. And depending on which way the wind was blowing, you either got a face full of it or it went the other direction and you still got a good odor of it, a good feel for it, a good smell. It was a great time and um, it was like a, a family atmosphere. So we would go to the track and part of this huge drag racing hot rod loving family. You got to know the drivers, you got to know the spectators, you got to know the, the, the track workers as opposed to uh, professional sports now where um, you don't have that community feeling. Despite the large crowds and popularity of the drag strip, the races came to a screeching halt in 1988. The drag strip is actually still there, tucked away behind a shopping mall. It sits overgrown and abandoned, forgotten by all, except for the countless people who remember the excitement of a night at the Fremont drag strip. Who do the 
Hello, I'm Bill Moore, and for 28 years I was a photojournalist at KTVU in Oakland. Great job. Worked it until I was 62 and decided it's time to go travel the world. I came home and, and started to walk. I walked because I couldn't run anymore. I was too old. And some of my walks would always end up at Grace Cathedral, which sits right on top of Knob Hill where I was living. And I'd walk, sit there, do the Lambeth, and just kind of reflect back on my career and what I've done, what I miss doing, and how much fun it was. Retired KTVU chief news photographer Bill Moore was the first African-American cameraman hired by a local news... It, it, it's not easy or a lot of fun being the first African-American anything, but my being the first African-American cameraman really wasn't hard because the first African-American who was my hero was, was Jackie Robinson that played Major League Baseball, and he really took a lot of crap. And he was always someone was I looked up to as my hero, and I knew that, okay, I've got to go in here and got to do this, and it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to stick it out. Their hiring was the result of a landmark federal court decision mandating that TV stations reflect their local communities. At the time, Moore says African-American journalists often met with hostility while trying to cover stories. I had experienced the worst of it when I started. When I started covering news in San Francisco, and I went out on the streets with a camera. I was the only black person there. There were no black writers, reporters, or anything. The other photographers I worked with didn't even speak to me, wouldn't even tell me where the news was. The police would keep me sometimes a half a block back from where the rest of the photographers were shooting. I was one of the few women mm -hmm. starting out, and he was one of the few African-American cameramen. And we both knew what it was like to be discriminated against or to be left out. So we were each other's backup. Tom Fleming, who was an African-American print journalist that we both admired. Tom, who came into the hall a lot, told Bill early on, always dress up, because when you're in the Hall of Justice, police and others are gonna think you're a defendant or a suspect. But if you're dressed up nicely, they'll know that you're not. Because in the 28 years I worked in broadcasting, there was one story after another story after another story that was big. Uh, the, the kidnap of Patty Hearst, the, the, the mass suicides of people in Jonestown, the, the assassination of the mayor of San Francisco and the first gay s supervisor, uh, the Oakland Hills fire, which really reminds us of this today after this mammoth fire we have in Sonoma County. So, any one of those would be a high point, would be something that really kind of sticks to me. George Moscone and Harvey Milk were assassinated. The cameraman calling the desk, and they said, uh, Simon Desk, you need to check out City Hall because they've been sending a lot of police cars and fire trucks down there. You need to find out what's going on. So the mayor was shot. I said, no. So I ran up to the mayor's office and there was some cameramen waiting in the hall said yes the corner is still in there they haven't removed the body so i told isabel i'll stay here and get that shot she said fine waited maybe five minutes and then they brought the mayor out to two corners office rolled it to the elevator opened up the elevator door and they got in of course we couldn't get in with them so we all ran down the stairs and run there was maybe three or four video cameras and a couple still cameras. Got to the first floor. They all ran out the front door on the Polk Street side. I continued going down the stairs knowing that they weren't going to bring him out that front door. They were going to take him out on the side somewhere. And sure enough, as I got to the basement, I realized that they were all gone and I was there by myself. Then the doors open up and I can still see it. Two corners, black suits. White shirts, black ties, looking very staid, rolled out the gurney with the mayor's body on it. It kind of upset me there, and I still see that shot. It still scares me. The top story I covered would probably be, you know, the, the Loma Freight earthquake, because it was very big. Gary and I knew the big one was coming so well. We had our own earthquake plan. When I was at Candlestick Park, 
And I got a hold of him on the two-way radio. Bill, where are you? And he was in the marina. So I drove down there and we worked all night long and just did that for a couple of weeks. Certainly because of the fires today, the Oakland Hills fire would be one. As the first live crew that got out from the Oakland Hills fire, Bill, we need to go up to Country Club Drive to be able to get a shot of this. Okay, let's go. It was a scary fire because the wind would blow it from house number one to maybe house number three. Being a cameraman, you, you're sort of like what a fireman does. You always, you have to be prepared. If you're not prepared for that thing, then it can, it can fall apart in you. And so there was times it was a little scary. Besides your job that's gonna motivate you because what happens to a lot of old cameramen, you, you burn out, have something, you know, family or hobby or good scotch, whatever, have something else that's gonna keep you motivated and keep you going because one day you will be taken out of all that and then what are you gonna do? And Bill and I would jump in the car and he would open his door so that the alarm on his car would go beep, 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 beep. And he would say, that's the alarm, Rita. We've got our, we've got our uh, siren going. And then he would punch a tape in and it would be a cassette of dirty laundry. And we would start singing at the top of our lungs. Just give me something, something I can use. Just give me your dirty laundry. Is the head dead yet? Is the widow on the set? Have you ever heard this? I make my living on the evening news. Bill is my model. Bill is my idol for how I want to win my life. He's kind of a father figure. Bill truly was and is a best friend. Bill was my cameraman, my friend, and my therapist. Any problems that I would have, and uh, Bill was a guy that I could always call and say, "Hey, Bill, man, this you know this this is what's going on." And he would give you the uh, the four one one. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call him. I wouldn't call him a mentor. I would call him your guidance counselor. Like if something isn't going well, and you bring it up while you're while you're driving, and you say, "Well, you know." Flowers will work. That he was kind, competent. I knew him from Belva, um, and he was a buddy. He was always a confidant. He was somebody you could depend on. Uh, Bill was the rock. Bill was always there, and he still is. He's still one of my very best friends. That he's always got a smile on his face, and he's always saying, "How you doing, Cal?" He's always interested. And what you're doing, how your life is going. Bill, you know, uh, always great working with you. Hope to enjoy this, uh, this piece they're putting together for you. And just congratulations on, on all your work that you did here and, uh, and your career over at Old Loney College. I hear you're doing great work over there. I'm looking into the camera <laughs> for this one, Billy Moore. You know, Rita Carroll loves you as much as she does her husband. You are one of my very, very best friends. And I can never thank you for being here for the all the years.
Did you like the class? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but have you seen the latest episode of Ghost Adventures? Dude, ghost hunting is like old people having sex. Like, come on, can you make a noise so we know you're here? Do you feel anything? How can you be making jokes right now, huh? Kate's been missing for God knows how long, and nobody knows where she is. Come on, dude, it's been three weeks. I'm just trying to brighten up the mood. The police can't find her, and her parents aren't any different. She's at the creek. I know she's at the creek. You're still on this? Dude, the police already searched it. She's nowhere to be found. How do they know? They haven't even looked. They don't even know how to do their jobs. Come on, man, it's the cop. Okay, fine. Walk away. That's fine by me. Let me do this again. Last time you saw it was at the creek. And now you're saying you see a wet person in your dreams? Are you sure you're not just having wet dreams? Ow. Hey, I'm just saying, I have dreams of me and Miss Mitchell all the time. Look, man. Kate's calling out to me, okay? She's trying to tell me where she is. I just know it. Dude, you're doing it again. You're stressing yourself out. It's just this time I can feel it. I just feel it. Look, she's always doing stuff on her own. Maybe this time it'll just take her longer than usual to come back. She'll turn up eventually. Gotta go. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? You've been cutting class lately, and when you do go to class, you're asleep. And you have been Dude, just to... don't even bother, okay? What? Your eye bags are literally falling off your face. Mm-hmm. 
Walking behind you Turn around Look at me There's someone Watching your footsteps Turn around Look at me no man's an island he's had this conversation no man's a forest even if he tries to be one I've seen your insides. Tate! Tate! What the hell are you doing here, man? What the hell are you doing here? I swung by your place, but you weren't there, so I just figured. What do you care about where I am? What? You never seem to care about where Kate was. Kate's gone, okay? And you're sitting around here talking about this crazy shit? You're losing you, man. Our best friend is missing, and all you can do is make stupid remarks? Well, she sure as hell isn't in this creek. This is what I'm talking about. You don't care about anything at all. And what good have you done? Huh? At least I'm coping with it. Or you're here at a stupid creek talking to some stupid ghost. I don't understand. I don't understand? I understand that I'm the sane one here. One of us has to be sane. And you're just losing it. Look, we both lost her, okay? I just, I just don't want to lose you too. A wooden bow sits up on the shore. Only the moon when the tide is. They found her. Mark, we're late, so get up. 
What? They are late. Come on, I'm gonna be there soon. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Bye. <gasps> oh, shoot! Let's go pick up some breakfast food. We're gonna be late. We might as well be super late. Are you kidding me? You know I hate skipping class. Don't, don't be a nerd, Joseph. Besides, you know I can't function so I cheap breakfast food. Alright, fair enough. Let's go! Now that you've had your garbage, do you think you can maybe function enough to pay attention in class this time? Oh, no. Oh. Of course not. A few moments later. Oh crap! We need to go! Like, now! It's so gross, food is just everywhere. Gentlemen, I have to admit, it's unnerving seeing you here early. Especially you, Mark. Aw, oh, Mrs. Blight. What would I do without the cure to my insomnia? I'll let that slide this time. This time. Have a seat. make that face when you talk to girls. What's up? What's this? Did you forget your mouth notes or something? Oh, son of a Hello? Who is this? is that you are obviously not Cortez. What's with this bag, man? Don't worry about the bag. I mean, you really don't have time to. In a few minutes, Cortez is going to be looking for that bag. And you really don't want him to find you. So I suggest you run. Fast. What happened? We gotta skedaddle. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay. You two, give me the bag! Give me the bag! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh god! You owe me 150 for that burrito! Oh, I'm seeing jackets! I'm seeing stars! Oh, oh god! Oh god! Oh. Okay. Alright. Where the heck are we supposed to go? Make your way to the alley between Madison and Phillips. I can take the bag, and you won't have to worry anymore. All right, where are we going? Madison first. Um, that way. All right. All right, we're here. Now what? Right. Here. What do you boys think 
you're going. Allow us to introduce ourselves. They call us the Dapper Gang. And that bag right there is our ticket to freedom. What are you talking about? This Cortez guy, he's an undercover agent who thought was fooling us. But now, we have the bag right here. So, all you want is the bag, right? Here, here, just, just take it. So, we're free to go? After you've seen us? Sorry, children. No can do. Don't worry. I'll make this quick. Oh, crap. You die, boss! No! Son of a Don't even try it! Keep your hands up! Right where I can see them! <laughs> Reign of terror? It's over. Ah. Let's go. Ah. Ah. Take it for questioning. And you too. I should have you both arrested for assaulting a federal officer. You could, but do you really want to put in the report that all it took to take you out was a high school student with a breakfast burrito? Good point. Consider us even. What the heck just happened? Ah, 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 don't touch, don't touch. Ah, ah, listen to me. I can't remember the name of this guy for the life of me. Did you get it? I know he did it. I just don't feel like dragging through the process, huh? You're always so lazy. Why do you drink that stuff anyway? Anyway, alright, this stuff right here has helped me crack more cases than you ever have. Let's be honest, you're lost without me. <laughs> ah! You know what? Let's make a bet. Hmm? Oh yeah? And what's that tough guy? Get this alien to admit the crime, how he did it, and why, and I'll buy you dinner. That's it? <laughs> I do that every time. And without my help. Alright. And if I lose what? Buy your donuts? No, wise guy. You buy lunches for the next two days. Mm -hmm. And you admit to everyone, you're a lazy prick. <clears throat> you know what? Just because I like how you're talking to me and you're getting all fired up, you got a deal. Why? Why what? Like, why Why do you shave? Like, it throws me off every time. Kid, listen, it's tradition. It's, it's not like the criminal's a hot date or anything. Like, why, why do you right, need to look okay, nice? Okay, kid, listen. You gotta learn. Learn from, me, okay? learn from what? No, Shut what? it. Shut it for me. What? And get in the room. Hey, kid, no, Just I get tell in the you room. get We need room. to get this job oh, done. No, I want to win this bet, all right? Because you're right, kid, you're going to lose, all right? Just get in there. You're fine. Bet, huh? Uh -huh. You're fine. Okay. We'll play it that way. Frederick, Detective Johnson and Miller are ready to see you now. That's about time. Hey, uh, we'll how you doing? Kid. Mr... Damn, what was his name? Richard or something like that. I could have swore it was Dick. Uh... Johnson? Johnson. Johnson. That's what it was. All right, yeah, mm -hmm. Johnson. Now listen here, Johnson. Jimmy Garcia. Murdered in cold blood and, uh... I have this gut feeling that tells me you're the one that did it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. He did it. He did it. Yeah, see, I told you he did it. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason you did it, uh, 
It was because of the, uh, the money, right? I mean, there was bloody dollars all over the crime scene. It makes sense. Actually... Actually, that's true. I mean, tough times call for tough measures for a guy like you. And seeing as how Jimmy Garcia had a lot of it on him, you could just, uh, disperse some literature with him, huh? Okay. No. That's not why I killed him. No, kid. I am really the calm guy. I am. It's just, <laughs> when I hear things like the word no. Hey, take it easy, kid. What are you doing? I get a little overwhelmed with emotion. I didn't mean to ruffle your feathers like that. I, I just, I want you to tell us your entire day, from beginning to end. My whole day? Your whole day. Spare no detail. All right. Hey, so I woke up pretty early because uh, I had things to do. How early? What things? Yeah, yeah, all right, easy. Okay. I woke up at like 10. It's too early for me, but I had some money owed to Jimmy G. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Garcia. Well known juice man for uh, Tommy Guns, right? I go to the spot, and believe it or not, he's not there. He's trying to get me killed. And, uh, why would he want to do that? I don't know, aren't you a detective? Why don't you tell me, Flatfoot? <laughs> Alright, elaborate, wise guy. We saw the guys and they saw uh, Vanessa walk into a diner. It's my ex, she's with Jimmy G. Killed him because of the girl. Revenge, that's it, case closed. That's Actually, no, I'm over here, that's been a couple years, and I got a dog, his name's Rocky. Oh! Come on, kid, I'm getting bored here. Then what? What do you want, Freddy? I thought I told you to leave me alone. Look, Vanessa, I don't want anything to do with you, all right? I just want to know where Jimmy is, okay? See, I knew. Even after all these years, you still want to talk about someone else. So, That's you know, naturally, I, I just tune out. But then I get to thinking, it hits me. Jimmy G's Uncle Louie works here. I figured I could ask him a thing or two. How'd you get the information out of him? Well, you know, peaceful conversation. <laughs> Please! He's on 34! 34! Thanks. Nice sandwiches, by the way. He ain't wrong there. They make a good pastrami sub. No, no, shut up. And you, keep talking. I, mean, I thought I was getting some more of you guys. Anyways, so I go to 34th, and he's there slanging on my spot. You wouldn't believe it. This guy's got some serious balls, right? Got it. You just admitted to selling. And the fact that you killed Jimmy G was just because he took your business? Yeah, he let the book this fool. No, you know, damn it. And the murder calls doesn't even happen until eight. You know, if you had stopped interrupting me, you might have actually won that bet by now, Mr. Miller. I... Oh, no, no, wait, no, 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 no. Manon, you had, you had the door open? You didn't lock it? Oh, what were you doing against Stan locking the door? I was, I was reading files. No, 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 not with that look. That disappointed parent, why would you do this look with me? Hey, right. Ralph, Alice, could you guys handle this later in like marriage counseling or something? So it goes across the street, we talk to this guy, catch him finally, and you won't believe who stops to talk to him. And what would that be? I knew I'd find you here. Why is it always me running into you instead of the other way around? You're such a loser. That's why I left you. Uh huh. So, with you, Vanessa, and Jimmy G there, the whole situation got escalated. All right, cool, I'm piecing it together. Uh, actually, that's really off. So, you say your lovey dovey to Vanessa, you walk up to your complex, and there he is, Jimmy Garcia, standing there. One thing leads to another, and you wind up killing the guy. Pretty damn close, but I mean. Uh, don't worry, it doesn't surprise me, kid. <laughs> I am curious, so. Well, to be honest with you, he cropped us the minute he stepped on my shoes. Hey! <laughs> really? You serious? <laughs> I, I'm not joking. <laughs> hey, but you know what the funniest part is? Let me tell the funny guy. A funny guy. Yeah, funny oh, guy. you're the funny guy now. I'm the funny oh, guy. Okay. Me. Yeah, funny looking. Forgot to cut me, asshole. No! Kate! Damn it! 
No, uh, I really like this time together, boys, but, uh, I gotta go. Hurry up! We don't have all day! Uh, uh, I was really actually starting to like that guy. Really, kid? The cuffs? Oh, we're, we're gonna start. Yeah, of course I'm alive. I got the vest on. Oh my gosh, you lucky really he shoot you in the head, head I kid. hoped he didn't. I really hope he killed you. Because I oh. do not want to buy dinner for you. Oh, no you're matter. gonna buy me dinner, all right, you best. Buy me dinner. Oh, you're gonna buy me dinner. Okay. And you're gonna tell everyone you're lousy, lazy prick. Lay there. Oh, no. And don't do it. You stay there. Hey, hey. Now we have to go catch him. We have to go catch him now. <laughs>